So, you think you know about halflings, do you? In the world of Mastar, were you aware that they don't even call themselves that? They are the hen. Not a childlike race, as some would claim, but a mature and proud people. There is more to the hen than pranks and thievery. Let's take a look at Gazetteer 8, The Five Shires, coming right up on RPG Retro Reviews. Welcome to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous, and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. And this week, I'm taking a look back at Gazetteer 8 The Five Shires by Forgotten Realms creator Ed Greenwood. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button and check out my vast library of old-school fantasy role-playing reviews. For those unfamiliar, the Gazetteer series were a series of 14 supplements and box sets released between 1987 and 1991 that detailed the various areas of the known world originally introduced in the David Cook expert set for the Dungeons & Dragons game. I've already detailed quite a few of these supplements on this channel, and if you find yourself interested in this setting and you haven't already, you might want to check them out. I've created a playlist of these reviews, and you can find them in the doobly-doo below. This series of campaign supplements was well-received and won many awards during the era of their release, and in later years have become very popular with collectors and enthusiasts, and as such, getting original copies has been quite the expensive proposition on eBay. For those who have despaired that completing their collection was an impossibility due to the prohibitive cost, rejoice. For now, the entire series is available for print-on-demand from Drive-Thru RPG. The website has done a phenomenal job at remastering and updating their PDF scans, and the prints that I have gotten from them are quite good and inexpensive. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin. The original prints of this supplement, like most of the gazetteers in the series, consisted of two booklets, a Dungeon Master's booklet and a Player's booklet, as well as a poster map of the area of the world in which the Five Shires resides. The Five Shires, of course, being the halfling realm of the known world, or as they refer to themselves, the Hin. Typically in the D&D game to this point, halflings were thought of as a mischievous and childlike in both stature and attitude and were looked upon with amusement, scorn, or with caution. In the D&D game, as opposed to the advanced Dungeons & Dragons game, halflings are a class unto themselves, gaining specific abilities such as a plus one to missile attacks, hiding in woodland areas, and bonuses when using individual initiative. Gazetteer 8 attempts to add to the lore of the halflings, as well as introduce new abilities that are only available while they are within the Five Shires region, as well as a new character class for them called the Master. This supplement was released in 1988, and I can't help but wonder if the movie Willow, which came out the same year, didn't have some kind of influence on the class, for Masters are essentially halfling spellcasters. Masters are those special halflings who have left their respective clan to become overall protectors of the Shires, using special knowledge of the woods and magic learned from the elves. A halfling that reaches 8th level may seek out a master to learn the secrets of the class and from this point forward, follow this chart for level progression and spell acquisition. Masters have a spell list of their own composed of spells from both the magic user and cleric spell list as well as quite a few new spells detailed in the supplement. Masters also gain Infravision and an enhanced Denial ability. Denial is a unique ability to halflings, 5th level or higher, who reside in the Five Shires. Essentially, a halfling of this level of ability can deny a single spell or magical item effect once every 24 hours. There are extensive rules given for this, as well as a denial table that lists the chance of success, as well as several modifiers that may affect the situation. 
Denial is based on the total of the halfling's intelligence and wisdom scores. Masters use double their intelligence score plus wisdom. There's a short story called Bungo's Denial that gives an example of the ability in use against a dark wizard named Dilatho who attempts to do something evil to one of Bungo's friends. The next section details the stages of the halfling's life, various possible paths, and talks about the halfling clans and what life is like for halflings in the Shires. Yulara are young halflings who are going through a wanderlust stage in their life. Halflings from the Shires encountered elsewhere in the known world are usually Yularan. It is through these adventurous halflings that the Shires gain an understanding of the world outside their realm. Yularan can be carefree, colorful, and perhaps a bit reckless. Within the Shire, halflings have no nobility, but there is status within the clan, including those that are clanless, having been expelled from their respective clans. Here, the supplement really shines as the details of the Hinn's culture is explored. Not just social status, but various strongholds and offices about the Shires, the weaving of tapestries to portray important events in the history of a particular clan, as well as involvement within the halfling's respective clan. The clan can be an important factor in a halfling's life, and players are encouraged to delve into this aspect of their character's background to help make the playing of a halfling something fun and unique, and several pages are dedicated to this aspect of the halfling's life, including a system on gaining influence points based on the halfling's actions, and thus gaining rank within the clan. The governmental hierarchy is explained, the roles of the sheriffs, and the nature of crime and punishment in the Shires is explored. Overall, the player section is extremely useful and provides a lot of guidelines to allow for hidden player characters to be unique and interesting. The Dungeon Master section delves into the history of the Hin in the known world, beginning with their time after the Great Reign of Fire, when a Blackmoor device exploded and tilted the axis of the world, bringing about a time of suffering and slavery for the Hin in the realm of the Orc King Othrog. Dark times indeed. Ultimately, they threw off their Orc oppressors to create their own realm, Hinden. Here, the halflings were able to live in prosperity and peace for many years, but squabbles among them led to their downfall as the orcs sought revenge. Known as the Dark Years, the Hin were caught in the middle of wars between the orcs, dwarves, and humans. Ultimately, the dwarven king Koktal, a shrewd and grasping king, emerged victorious, and he also enslaved the halflings and put them to work in the mines. Loktal's realm came to an end as once again the orcs united and as the dwarven king worked to put down the orcs the hen gathered strength and attacked cocktail's forces in their weakened state and once again the hen rose to rule themselves once more with the rising of the realm of sheridan this cycle of rise and fall continued for many years and ultimately sheridan split into the five shires. In the year 700 AC, orcs rose once more to invade the shires, but this time the Hin skillfully trapped and destroyed the orcs in the Battle of Black Flame. In the year 989, a large number of Trolladarians fled to the shires seeking asylum from the cruel Black Eagle Barony, which prompted Baron von Hendricks to invade the shires, thinking the diminutive Hin an easy conquest. Three successive expeditions from Fort Doom were annihilated by the Hen. Thus, Hendricks elected to turn his evil ambitions elsewhere. The climate of the Shires is green and temperate, situated on the coast of the Sea of Dread to the south and the Black Spire Mountains range to the north and fed by several large rivers. The Shires are ideal for farming, with the main topography characterized by rolling hills and lush forests. Given this, it's no surprise that the Hin must stave off many enemies wishing to displace them and take their land. However, given their history, the Hin have developed a robust militia and battle groups known as Fangs, usually led by a knight hero of 8th level. The Grand Army of the Shires only forms in wartime and in recent times has only been raised against the first invasion of the Black Eagle Barony. If you are using the War Machine rules from the Companion set, game stats are provided for the Fang and Militia units, as well as other units called Strikers. One of the interesting aspects of Demi-Humans in the D&D game was revealed in the Companion rule supplement. 
Each race is in possession of a sacred relic. The elves have the Tree of Life, the dwarves have the Forge of Power, and halflings have the Crucible of Black Flame. The Gazetteer takes the details provided in the companion rules and then fleshes it out for the Shires. The Crucible of Black Flame in the care of the clan appropriately named Black Flame Clan. There are many uses for the sacred black flame and certain powerful hen known as keepers are able to master many of its mysteries, including hurling it like a weapon, absorbing it into their bodies, and even forging magical items with it. Hen are typically immune to the harmful effects of black flame, but any other race touching it will be cold burned by it. Of course, detailed rules on damage, the use of black flame as a weapon, and forging magical items with it are detailed. In the next section, important NPCs are detailed and their various backgrounds and positions described. Of course, upon the reading, many adventures involving these powerful and well-connected characters will suggest themselves to a creative DM. And of course, the five shires themselves are described, and this is where the supplement really shines. Given this was written by Ed Greenwood, it's surely no surprise that this reads and has many elements of the future Volo's Guide supplements. A few years ago, I did a review on the Volo's Guide to Waterdeep and praised Greenwood's ability to give character, charm, uniqueness, and life to the city's various establishments and NPCs, and that ability is on full display here. The various towns are discussed, and in addition to population and the kind of goods, services, and establishments that can be found in each, you will find clan names and backstories that breathe that breathe life into what could be a boring list of towns and locations. Interestingly, Greenwood uses the word hen to describe halflings in the Forgotten Realms as well. And when asked if the five shires could be transplanted to that fantasy world, he had this to say. Sure, superimpose the Lorian cities and government structure, shift places just a little to make room for them, and yes, it works admirably for that. Almost as if someone planned it that way. Lastly, a section of running a campaign in the Five Shires is provided, which can be used as a guide for the types of encounters to run, what monsters are common or prevalent in the Shires from the various rule sets, and it's important to note that the rules cyclopedia was still several years away from publication, and the references here are for the various box sets, basic, expert, companion, master, and immortal rules, collectively known as Beckme. Though all the monsters referenced here can be found in the rule cyclopedia, which is an omnibus of the Beckme rules and is available for print on demand. Finally, there are rules on adapting the supplement to the AD&D game and a two-page section on what everyone knows about the five shires. If you have the PDF version, this can be printed out and given as a handout for your players. The excellent cover art for this supplement is by the venerable Clyde Caldwell, and interior art is by Artie Ruiz, the cartography is by David Sutherland, Dennis Koth, and a company credited as Frey Graphics. Getting a copy of this out of print supplement is now easier than ever as its PDF can be purchased on DriveThru RPG for just $4.99 and as I said earlier, the print on demand is available as of this video for just $13.99. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the Five Shires by Ed Greenwood on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. Style-wise, this one follows the typical format for the previous Gazetteers. There is both a player's book and a DM's booklet and a poster map. However, in the print-on-demand version, all of this has been condensed into one large tome. If you look at the PDF, you'll happily discover that the poster map is all one single piece rather than being chopped up. If you look at the print-on-demand, you'll find that effort was made so that each section of the poster map fills its respective pages and is absolutely usable for reference. The quality of the scan is top-notch and high resolution, and thus the print came out nicely. I'm going to rate this an 18. As far as presentation goes, while this can get very text-dense in quite a few places, for the most part, Ed Greenwood's prose makes this an enjoyable and entertaining read, especially in the actual Gazetteer section. The language is such that this fantasy realm can be easily visualized by the DM and thus presented to the players. 
The supplement makes a great case for running an entire campaign within the Shires. There are adventure hooks, and given that the Rule Cyclopedia is now available for print on demand, there's no reason you couldn't run this campaign as written or easily use rule sets like Old School Essentials or Labyrinth Lord with little modification. The supplement offers a fun look at the culture and lifestyles of the hen, though I think there is a bit of clumsiness in regards to the deniability and the masterclass, as they are technically not to be used outside the shires. This preserves continuity with the base rule set, but greatly restricts their usefulness. If you are not running a campaign in the shires themselves, but all of the racial gazetteers were guilty of this conceit. Of course, there's no reason that the DM can just ignore this restriction entirely. That said, this is one of the best of the series and greatly expands on halfling lore, making them very interesting and fun to play. I'm going to rate this an 18 as well. Finally, let's talk value. For this review, I'm only going to talk about the PDF and print-on-demand option here, as I'm assuming that the interest in this supplement is for actual gameplay. If you want to spend excessively on this because you are a collector, that's fine, but this review is geared towards those who are looking for a setting for halflings or are looking to expand their insights on the culture and livelihood of halfling characters. The PDF is top-notch, full poster scan in high quality editable format. It has a full PDF bookmark index and the print on demand is very reasonably priced and of high quality. This is a natural 20 critical hit. And that brings my overall rating for Gazetteer 8 the 5 Shires by Ed Greenwood to a 19. Amazing. And that about wraps up another RPG Retro Review. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Next week, I'm going to dive into the second edition adventure module, Vecna Lives. I spent a lot of time looking at this module, and given the ratings I've seen elsewhere, I wasn't expecting much, but, well, to find out my opinion on this, please check back next week. I'd like to thank all my patrons who support the channel month after month. Thank you for your continued support. Without you, these videos would not be possible. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Please check out my Teespring store for great gaming swag, t-shirts, carry bags, coffee cups, and more. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Retro Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself, or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar. A link is in the description. Also new to the channel with this video, Super Thanks is now active right below. So, if you want to leave a tip that way, please feel free. Thank you. And as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true. Game on. <laughs>